For this episode of our Cummins Trailhound series, I'm back at Juniper Overland near Denver for another huge transformation because right now we're going to be lifting our Ram Cummins and putting it on 37. So let's bring it in. Hi, puppy. Uh, so here's what, one of the problems we're trying to solve. Uh, this ram is 4x4 is fairly capable already, but look how much um, space we have here. That's not quite going to be enough when we go to El Camino del Diablo in Arizona. And uh, we're going to be by ourselves, you know, with two vehicles uh, on a 130 mile um, desert road. So that's why we want to get it a little bit higher in the air, uh, get, get it some better clearance, maybe even better articulation and get a larger tire underneath us uh, just to get overall a better um, overlanding truck. So this is why uh, we're doing this. This Ram 2500 overlanding series would not be possible without help from our friends at Rider Justice, a law firm that specializes in motorcyclists and the overlanding community across the country. Yep, they're passionate overlanders as well. And as with their motorcycle brothers and sisters, they want to make sure that overlanders like you protect their pricey rigs after an accident. Start with a simple audit of your insurance. And did you know that anything attached to your overlanding vehicle is covered by your auto insurance? But anything you put in your vehicle is covered by your homeowner's insurance. Don't know which is which? That's where Rider Justice can help. So go to riderjustice.com overlanding if you have an accident on your future overlanding adventure. Right, are you ready for this? Let's do it. Uh, because uh, this is going to be like Christmas uh, mixed with a Tetris game. All right. Are you? <laughs> let's, uh, let's see what goodies you guys uh, brought. So this is also showing that an alley cabin can also be a truck, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Still use it for day-to-day -day use. Oh man. So this is a collaboration of many different companies. So of course Juniper Overland, alley cabin, Mopar. Let's check this out. I also got flares. Oh, no. Oh. So wheel flares to cover some of the, you know, if, if the tire is poking out a little bit, yep. we can cover that. All right. So BDS, Fox Shocks, BFG, KMC. <laughs> All right. Uh, there's a lot of acronyms, but this weighs a lot. All right. Can you help me? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, Ryan, so let's go over some of the components. So these are the front arms. These yeah, are front radius rod arms and uh, BDS components that, we, that we're going to be using today. Uh, one of the great things about BDS is they're using a rubber uh, bushing that's um, like factory. So that maintains the ride quality that you have as you're going down the road. Uh -huh. um, it gives you the comfort level that we need. Um, we'll see. We should do a weight comparison when we're, when we're done with these. The other thing that's going to happen on the front end of this is we're going to put an adjustable track bar. Track bar. Uh -huh. so and here's the stock one already here's the coming stock off. One. And then we have a stabilizer too. Right. So we're going to be putting um, Fox Shocks uh, Performance Elite Series mm -hmm. with high and low speed compression adjusters. And then we're going to be putting a Fox uh, Performance Series steering stabilizer on it because we're going to larger tires. We want to be able to uh, manage that. And these are replacement front replacement springs. Replacement front springs. And um, because that's about three inches of lift. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. You wanted to keep the center of gravity low, and so um, that's what we're doing. These are the front shocks. And uh, basically, what we have is a remote reservoir, and we have a internal floating piston here that separates oil that travels between the shock and then we've got nitrogen on this side. Um, what that allows us to do is gain more travel, um, also have more oil capacity, 
that oil capacity allows us to keep the shocks cooler. Shocks are basically radiators, so as you guys are going down roads. Yeah. Well, we're, we're, yeah. we want to do 130 miles of nothing but off road. Yeah. So we, need, so this we need a lot of support. Right. And so these are going to be the perfect shocks for that. So this adjuster allows us to fine tune our compression, high and low speed. Low speed is not how fast you're necessarily driving, it's how fast the shaft moves. So this controls body sway. So low speed field. would be like a like a gentle whoop, right? Yeah, and so or, body, shock... or body roll. Uh -huh. So that's what low speed is. And then high speed is going to be our, our hard edges, our potholes, our rocks. Or like a, um, a speed bump, like speed we're, we're bump, hitting it hard. Yeah. And, you know, on when you get on, on dirt roads that have all the washboards, yeah. and this will soak all that up. So this is a stock front shock. Yes. And this is the Performance Elite series. I mean, you can tell the difference immediately, right? Yeah, so what, what, you're, what you really see is a strength option. But the other issue is a larger shaft allows us to move more fluid. And the other thing with the body is it allows us to have larger piston head and shim stock. Um, that allows us to create a, a larger dynamic range for, to, for when we to tune these shocks for these specific vehicles. Here's the stock front spring of the Cummins 2500. And here's the BDS kit front spring. So first of all, you could see this one is pretty much evenly coiled. This is kind of a two-stage. So first of all, it's way larger and it provides the lift, as you can see. But also, uh, as the spring compresses, it can have various rates. Is that right? Yeah. So, this is tight, more tightly wound right here. Progressive. Progressive, so, and the spacing here is a little bit wider. So if you need that extra weight carrying capacity, this will provide that. So Josh, can you give me a quick update on, uh, on the progress here? Uh, well, we're getting closer on the front end, um, getting coils and shocks in, and then we'll do track bar, uh, get it all back together, get everything torqued, and then we'll move to the rear. I think I know that guy. And maybe that guy too. Anyway, that, that's pretty cool. I, I wanted to show you around Juniper Overland here near Denver, Colorado, because they kind of do from one end to the other, accessories, kitchen stuff, your fuel cans. They have suspension choices. They have camping choices like um, AT, LU cab, four wheel campers, um, off-road gear, ladders. Uh, but they're also actually built trucks here. So in the previous episode, you saw, you saw Juniper Overland, Josh and team, install the LU cabin on our truck uh, but here's another sneak peek I mean they're working on a Tacoma right now installing lights and accessories uh, we're installing our suspension uh, guys over there are actually building another LU cabin uh, set up you know putting it together and equ equipping it like the customer wants so it's kind of end-to-end -end, uh, over here which is pretty cool and you know it doesn't matter how big your CV or truck is. It could be a Ram heavy duty, can be a Tacoma. Uh, these guys can help you out. Weight matters and especially it's important when you're talking about wheels and tires. So what I want to do here, I have a scale and this is a stock 20 inch wheel uh, with a factory Firestone Transforce tire, 93 pounds. That's pretty impressive already for um, a stock wheel tire uh, combination. Of course, we wanted to go with as small of a wheel as possible to get as big of a tire and a sidewall as possible on this truck. So that's what we did, the 17 inch KMC wheel from Wheel Pros. K02 tire. That was 93 versus 103, so we're getting 10 pounds. But we're gaining a lot of, you kind of see it here. We're getting a lot of diameter. So 10 pounds per corner, well, that's not a huge, huge amount. I was thinking 
it would be more, but only 10 pounds. I'm doing nothing. They're working hard, I'm hardly working, so that's how it goes. So the front axle is almost done, and that's the more complicated part of the build. So there's, of course, the steering, the radius arms, uh, the shocks and remote reservoirs, and then the steering components and the rest of it, and also the stabilizer bar or the stabilizer shock as well. In the rear, it's gonna be a little bit more simple, but I wanted to take this opportunity to show you the rear axle on the Ram 2500 because uh, currently for modern heavy duty trucks, um, it's the only one with coils in the back. If you look at a three quarter ton a GM truck or a Ford, those guys are using leafs, um, leaf springs, and these uh, rams can either have a steel spring like this, and we'll be adding a, a spacer to get the lift here in the back, or they also have airbags uh, suspension on these trucks. So it's a little bit more unique in a heavy duty space, but I think it's just a, still a really good option, and of course we're gonna put shocks, Fox shocks on the back of it as well. You're probably wondering how much does this cost? Well, here's the breakdown. And the way we went with this build is we wanted to do kind of a medium to kind of a really good quality, high performance uh, setup. So the BDS lift kit, including everything you saw in this video, that's just over 2000 bucks. Then, because we went with 2.5s, uh, which is a really nice solution, really capable, uh, each side, each axle is about $15.99, so that's about $3,200 for the shocks. So that's just over five grand for the setup you see here. But if you didn't want to spend that, you could do, go with a 2.0 system for shocks. You, well, not quite as capable, but you could save quite a bit of money. Um, this is a stabilizer, by the way. But if you did get these shocks, that would be about $800 for the whole four corners. Um, so there are options out there. And if you want to go crazy, well, you can do a custom suspension system with other customized shocks, and the sky is the limit. So these are the spacers, huh? Yeah. So it kind of would go on, on here. Yep, so it's a, just like that. So I'm going to set all four shocks to the third setting. So that's the fast speed adjustment. I'm going to find the third click. One, two, three. And the same thing for the low speed. Make sure it's all the way to the left. And then see one two three so that's kind of the middle ground and then we'll drive it and make more adjustments hey Josh so my buddy uh, Dan from Mopar sent a uh, friend of flares sweet so I think it will set off the truck build you know oh yeah pretty pretty nicely to give it that aggressive look yeah maybe almost a power wagon look you know yeah Right, Ryan. Right. Excuse well, me. after a lot of hard work, uh, let's go for a first test drive. All right. So this is Trailhound uh, with BDS and Fox shocks and BFGs and everything else. So we're carrying the LU cabin, right? So this truck has a little bit of weight in the back. So how did you set the shocks from the beginning? So right now the base setting we have on the rear is six low speed compression and six high speed compression. Okay, and, and this is out of how many, so to speak? Um, you have relatively nine 
of low and a 12 of high. So we've got lots of room. We're kind of dead center. Okay, okay. And then soft on the front right now. Uh-huh. We haven't really been able to find any square edge or high speed compression. No, but I, I can. Let's, but, let's uh, hit this first. It's kind of a, like a, a washboard. That feels pretty good. How about lean? A lot more stable. Oh that? yes, I see that totally. Yeah. And that's that's our low speed. And how fast were you going through that section back there? I don't know, but pretty quick. Yeah, I think you were going I, a lot faster you went through it the first time, so. Yeah, I, I'm like. That's the thing with high speed compression. If it's when you get it dialed in, you end up realizing you're driving. You can drive a lot faster through yeah. those sections, and it's a lot more comfortable. And it's really important, you know. In many cases, I was talking to a hunter recently who said, you know, I have to drive 40 miles to get to my hunting place, and I want to get there quicker, right? So yeah. that's very important. You know, it is amazing though. Like I had some sway right there on the way in. Mm -hmm. And I had almost no sway on the way out. Yeah, well, because we, we made tuned, those adjustments. Yeah. 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 And what you'll notice is if you tow your, and you said you wanted to pull the van. Yeah. You don't tr try it first without any adjustments, just on your base settings, uh -huh. and see how light the front end feels. And then when you make your adjustments on the rear, how that transfers weight back to the front wheels, and how that vehicle feels, and and, and that sway disappears. That's really sweet, but it's. It's really good to have that adjustability because, you know, if you didn't have these shocks, you, you know, you don't have that option, right? You have, you have a setting and that's it. Yeah, and what's interesting now is you're driving and I'm seeing that you're slowing for <laughs> events in front of us. I did. That, like, I probably wouldn't even let off. Yeah. Right? And I think as you drive this truck more, you'll realize that, like, these railroad tracks, you can just keep your, your foot into it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going 40. Whoa, and dude. you don't even notice it. No. That and was before, amazing. And before, in the old in the old suspension, as before, you slowed down to I think twenty miles an hour when we went over that before. Yeah, and like, and it was kind of jarring, right? Yes. At yeah, 20. And, and, yeah, and this is forty. This is doubling the speed. Yeah. All right. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I think the payoff is huge. The way this truck looks and drives straight out of uh, the garage, I think it's a huge improvement. Uh, Check out OTFL.com and on the next episode, we're going to start making our way towards Arizona. We still need to update my van a little bit and dress it up for off-roading and then uh, we'll be on our way. Thanks for joining me.